Democratic Majority Leader Congressman Steny Hoyer. Hey, Steny, good to see you. What did you think of the president's speech last night? You were in one of those more moderate uh, mid-Atlantic state districts. How are your people going to respond to this speech? Well, I think they're going to respond very positively. As a matter of fact, Joe, on the polls that I've seen this morning, uh, they did uh, respond all over the country uh, very positively to this speech. I think the president did uh, what he needed to do. First of all, he made it very clear uh, there is a very big problem we've got to deal with, uh, that the present system is not sustainable from a financial s standpoint for individuals, for families, for businesses, small, medium, and large, uh, and for the government uh, and for the taxpayers. So I think he made the case as to why we're moving on this. Uh, he made the case for uh, the fact that a lot of these myths that have been talked about uh, are not accurate. Uh, in fact, Eric Cantor made the case, I thought, for, uh, for this bill uh, in his closing statement uh, just now to you in terms of the problems that confront business and individuals with respect to health care. So I think it was a speech that uh, focused the American public on why we're dealing with this issue. Uh, of course, every presidential candidate, Republican and Democrat, talked about doing health care reform in the last election. So we had a, a year's debate, essentially, on both sides uh, of the uh, uh, aisle, Republicans and Democrats, saying we needed to move forward on health reform. Yeah. The president's put forward a plan that I think uh, okay. uh, can work and must work. Willie Geist. Uh, Congressman Willie Geist here. Tell us where we are right now. We read some reports yesterday before the speech that Democrats don't have the votes to get health care done. Can you tell us, having worked uh, inside on the, on the Hill uh, relentlessly, where do you stand right now? How close are we to getting the votes for health care reform? How close are you, I should say? Well, I think we're, uh, I don't have a count for you, but I will tell you this. Everybody that I've talked to since we've come back uh, over the last two days has told me they are for health care reform. Every Democrat that I've talked to is, says they are for health care reform. Clearly, the details matter. Uh, but uh, again, Cantor indicated we want to build on the present system. He's absolutely right. Now, they discount the fact that the president said, if you've got it and you like it, you can keep it. That's the fact. Uh, we're building on the system, building a system that will provide for affordability, for quality health care mm -hmm. and accessibility. That's our objective. I think that's what the president laid out. That's what we're going to do, and I think All we'll right. get the votes. Nora O'Donnell. I think we'll get the votes. Uh, Congressman, it's Nora O'Donnell here. Let Hi, me ask Nora. you about uh, the president's proposal when it comes to small businesses. And as we all know, small businesses are the engine of this economy. They are going to help this economy turn around. They're going to hire people. What about the requirements about whether this will break the back of small businesses when you require, when you mandate that they uh, cover the insurance of all of their employees? Be specific. What are you going to require small businesses to do? Because most small no, no. businesses cannot pay the full cost of insuring an employee. Nora, first of all, as you know, 95% uh, of small businesses are exempt, essentially, uh, over, the, over time. Uh, that uh, was in one of the amendments in the Energy and Commerce Bill, because we understand that businesses of 25 or less uh, are struggling, but their employees and themselves. Well, what the about a small, small business that has 100 employees? If you're making windows, if you're a restaurant, you have right. 100 employees. And let's say you do have annual payrolls over $500,000. Will you require a small business to pay the entire cost of an employee's health insurance or in fact, just to provide the option of health insurance because this is really significant and no one has talked about this. We're giving a 50 percent tax credit, uh, Nora, uh, for exactly that reason. Two small businesses uh, so that they can uh, uh, can afford uh, the insurance because we understand that that will be a burden and so we're going to give them a big tax break uh, in order to help them afford that because we believe that their employees need to be covered and very frankly the small business people I talk to say they believe themselves and their employees need to be covered. It's a competitive uh, issue for them, uh, but uh, they need help, and that's why we're giving a tax Congress, credit in the bill. Congressman, are, are, is there going to be a punishment for this Joe Wilson? I, I've been hearing reports about that. It sure. seem a little kind of. Well, I, th I thought what uh, Congressman Wilson did was. Uh, Totally inappropriate, uh, yeah. shameful, really, in many ways. He has apologized. Uh, I think, frankly, he ought to apologize to the House as well, because not only did he uh, undermine uh, the civility in the House of Representatives uh, and uh, say something the President in 29 years I've never heard said, 
uh, in a presidential speech on the House floor. Of course, uh, Sidney called me that. I think he deserves called me that on the House floor every day. Well, Sidney, but I deserved it. Right. Right. <laughs> now, Joe, <laughs> I said some things on the House floor, but never that. You I know. Notice truthful. he doesn't say you no. Just no he did not deny. You did not deny. Wrong and truthful. <laughs> that, well, you, well, you know what? Truth. Always remember, truth is the defense. There and you for go. you, it always saved you. All right, Congressman.